At the beginning of 2007, the UK's debt to GDP ratio was 40%. 15 years later, for reasons that we all know about, it was 95%. Well, how and how fast can this be reduced? An analysis of 120 years of policymaking gives us some clues about what works and what doesn't. Hello, Mike. Good to talk to you. Morning, Tim. Now, Mike, with these long views of the uh, economy, you've gone all the way back to 1900. It's fascinating to find that there is data for this. What data did you use? Well, this data set goes back to 1270. But there's 1270. This is the uh, the Millennium Data Bank of the um, Bank of England. Uh, they don't have data on fiscal policy, the, the, the material I've been using, beyond 1900. But uh, you can go back to inflation and GDP back to 1270. It's an amazing data set. It's a compilation of lots of other researchers' data being constructed over time and, and put together um, really greatly to the um, uh, uh, usefulness of academics. Ter terrific data set. And, and uh, I have to thank uh, Ryland Thomas, who updated the data set for me uh, to 2020, because, um, because it was it didn't go, I think it went up to about 2010 or something. But obviously, the later period I wanted to include too. And you've been calculating debt to GDP ratios. How, what's the variation of this ratio been then since 1900? <laughs> well, it varies between um, the highest point was 283% of GDP, which was in 1946. Um, and it, it rose from 32% of GDP in 20, uh, 1913 to 169% uh, in 1919 after World War I. So the main reason why it increases is just expenditures in world wars. So those are the big increases. But what um, you know, what what most economists would say was that you should you should uh, debt finance temporary expenditures, and you should um, tax finance um, uh, permanent expenditures. But of course, wars are temp we think of as temporary expenditures. So this is a natural situation for using debt, and that's what happened both in World War One and World War Two. And we've seen it again recently, of course, in the financial crisis, which we regarded as a temporary shock, and also in the in the COVID pandemic. So the, the, these are two other big periods when the debt GDP ratio rose. So I was particularly interested in asking the question, well, everybody's concerned about these high numbers. So how did we deal with it in the past? Well, one thing that economists also said up until fairly recently, in the last few years anyway, was that thinking about jet debt to GDP is a bit old hat, isn't it? The interest rates stuck at the lower bound. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Has, uh, has that all changed now? Well, looking at these data, the contribution to the debt GDP ratio stayed more or less constant since 1900, even right up to the present day. Uh, although it, and and it's, it averages about 4% uh, of uh, debt GDP over the whole period. And it hasn't changed in recent times because we've had very low inflation. Um, but of course, we're expecting interest rates to rise. And um, so it, the contribution could temporarily increase. But my, my calculations seem to show that it's not really uh, uh, something that's, that uh, has affected the debt GDP ratio greatly. But it might do. Who knows? It might do. Now, what other factors are you analysing as influencing this ratio then? So uh, I just kept my analysis to what's, what the components of the government budget constraint. So these components are the uh, primary deficit or surplus, that's expenditures and tax revenues, um, growth and inflation, because increases in nominal growth tend to reduce uh, the debt GDP ratio um, uh, and interest payments. And then and then more recently, we've seen an unusual phenomenon of, well, you could, it, it turns out that the monetary financing that we've seen in the financial crisis, we, you can think of as adding to, to the debt GDP ratio. Certainly, that's, that's how it's recorded in the statistics. Yeah, so there's those main factors. Of course, there are a lot of other factors in the background that affect all of these variables. But I was, I, I just focused uh, to keep the, the problem smaller on the, the individual contributions through the government budget constraint. And the, the historical analysis in this is looking at when debt to GDP was high, what brought it down? What periods are we looking at for this when debt to GD, GDP 
film? Yeah, so between World War One and World War Two, there was almost no reduction in the debt GDP ratio. Uh, and then it leapt up again uh, uh, in financing World War Two, and that's when it reached 283% of GDP. Um, then it, it steadily came down from... from um, 46 to about 74 and by 1974 it was it was about 67% of GDP and then it shot up again and then slowly fell to 1990 there was a long secular decline in the debt GDP ratio and it, it came down to 29% of GDP which is a huge fall isn't it um, so then we and then we we and nothing much happens until we get to the financial crisis and then there's a big leap from 41 to 80 a doubling of the debt GDP ratio and if you remember Gordon Brown was targeting a 40 percent debt GDP ratio um, so this was this really um, broke uh, uh, th that particular project and then in the um, financial crisis it rose from I think at the start of the financial crisis, it was about 80% of GDP, and it rose to over 100. So you can see the last two episodes, the financial crisis uh, and, the, um, uh, and the pandemic, one increased it by 40 percentage points and the other by 20 percentage points. So we're back, back, down, we're back down to numbers that, that we haven't really seen since um, you know, the 1970s. Um, well, in fact, before that, but prob probably... Um, the 1960s or something like that. I'd remember very well that 40% target and how it was considered to be a, an absolute cast iron rule at the time, wasn't it? It was indeed. So when you're looking at these periods, what is bringing down the ratio? Is it the same thing every time? No, it's been different periods uh, have uh, different variables have contributed in different periods. So in the early period, uh, most of the emphasis was on um, running a primary surplus. Uh, tax revenues uh, greater than government expenditures, um, and um, but late, more recently uh, um, that that's been um, less important. So, for example, uh, over the period um, I've got some numbers here which I perhaps I can bore people with. Um, <laughs> um, the if you if you look at the the overall period from from 1900 to 2020. The impact of inflation is twice as big as the impact of any other factor. Um, and most of this occurred during the period 46 to 73. Remember, we had that huge, huge inflation rates in 1974. So that was a, that had a big impact from inflation. And then inflation had a, again had a had a big impact after um, the um, 1970s. But recently, it's had no impact at all. So the, main, the two main variables are running a primary surplus uh, and, and inflation. Interesting, gr growth uh, has, has had very little impact. I remember um, there was a discussion. Um, uh, Gordon Brown used to run what he called the Keynesian sem seminars. Um, and so the idea was, one of his ideas was to raise the rate of growth of GDP from 2.5% to about 2.5%. And an economic historian who was on this seminar said, ah, oh, Chancellor, you're not going to do that. The UK growth rate never increases above 2%. <laughs> so you're going, to, you have, you're going to have to do something absolutely amazing to achieve this. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's what you see in the figures. The growth really has very little impact. Which a lot of people might be surprised about because so much policy has targeted growth. Now, yeah, but of course, policy isn't just about reducing the debt GDP ratio, isn't it? There are all sorts of trade-offs when you do that. Are you seeing that the the interaction of these different factors over the last century sort of matches what we'd expect or what we're, we're taught when we study economics? Yes. So, okay, you say that it's not the main target, but it's an important target because there's a sort of, there's an element of moral responsibility. Debts that pile up today are simply going to be paid by future generations. So the more we see debt rise today, the more we're saying to ourselves, look, we, we, we're so important, we're protecting ourselves. We're just, we're just going to make sure that we don't suffer from the crises we've created or inherited. And we're going to put the burden on to the future generations. So economists have always thought of debt as being very important because it in involves this sort of moral obligation not to pass on your problems to the future generation. So having said that, of course, there are other things to be concerned about, like um, uh, 
particularly the business cycle effects. But if you if you look at economic growth over the years, what you if you sort of draw a line of how economic growth has behaved over time, what you find is there are a few kinks in it. And these kinks are the recessions. And so what you see is that the most important factor in economic welfare is economic growth. And actually the impact uh, of of recessions is relatively small, which I think would surprise most people because, you know, most of macroeconomics is focused on stabilisation policies, on business cycles. You know, nearly all the papers written are on business cycle behaviour. But actually, it's economic growth that turns out to be the most important factor in increasing um, economic welfare. Now, it's going to be someone's job in the near future to bring down this ratio. I'm not sure many people will be queuing up to take that job. But someone's going to have to do it. So uh, what should they be targeting? What sort of growth, what sort of inflation should they be targeting? And how low are they going to be able to get? How soon are they going to be able to get there? Well, I did some, I did some very um, back of the envelope calculations to try to uh, ask this question. So uh, what I found was that um, if you wanted to reduce the debt GDP ratio to Gordon Brown's target, for example, of 40%, you would need to, to, to run um, a primary surplus of 5.5% of GDP, which is, which is a, very, a very large number. Or you would have to have nominal growth of 6%. So that means a sum of inflation uh, and economic growth. Now, these are, these are very large numbers. Very, very, it would be very politically difficult to achieve those numbers. If you, if you took a target of 60%, um, uh, then you could have much lower numbers. So and then so then I looked at what the current situation was. If you took more reasonable numbers, like three percent surplus, two percent growth rate, which is which is normal, two percent inflation rate, which is more or less normal, it would take seven and a half years to bring the debt GDP ratio back down to forty percent, and it would take five years if you targeted sixty percent. So uh, so that, that, that these these um. So we're, we're talking of those, uh, in those numbers, 3%, 2%, 2%. These aren't actually numbers that currently we're observing, because if you look at the current data, what you see is that the deficit is 8%, growth is only 1%, and inflation is 10%. Um, and my, by my calculation, the effect of this would have, if we carried on like this, the effect of this on the GDP ratio would be nothing. We would stay where we are. So... OK, you can bring it down by a combination of these variables. Um, the, the first set of variables I gave you are, are politically unachievable. Um, and so uh, it's not at all clear how fast the debt GDP ratio can, become, can come down. <laughs> Contrary to people's um, concern, of course, the best way to bring it down um, would be to have run primary surpluses but you know present we're running even we're running big deficits and the other side of it then would be to have high inflation but we don't like inflation uh, because that also results in a loss of welfare difficult position yes and certainly one that means we're going to be talking about debt for quite a while yet i think Mike. So. so we could be talking about this again thank you very much okay thank you tim mike's paper is called how might the united kingdom's debt gdp ratio be reduced evidence from the last 120 years it's going to be published in Economic Affairs in June, and there's an earlier version available as DP17172 at CPR. Well, that's all for now. We'll see you soon.